In today's episode, we dive into how the vegan revolution has boosted the economy and provided a platform for small businesses and new concepts to grow and be explored. Get it? Grow? So, David Chayet, right? Try it. Try it. Try it. Where's that from? Lithuania. Love actually. Lithuania. Love it. Love it. Have you ever been? Never. You should try it. It's amazing. So, and, uh, we're speaking about a brand that you guys have created that you say 2020? Yeah, Jan 2020 we launched. But for me, it looks like a brand that I've known my entire life. How did you guys get that marketing of it right? Because it, I feel like I've seen it a lot longer than just two years, two, three years. Yeah, look, a lot of thought went into... You know what this brand looks like um how does it sit on shelf how does mm. it how do people feel about it mm -hmm. as you're saying you think it's been around mm -hmm. for a long long time um and um, a lot of thought and energy went into that first and foremost to see mm. how we could break the 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 market in terms of what's out there mm. how we can make a noise about it without too much heavy marketing and mm. so the packaging was really really important to us mm. okay how did it come about and pronounce it for me okay okay so okay is actually a, a netflix uh, movie um you should watch it mm. especially talking about meat etc mm. um it is it's about a super pig it's about the industrial meat industry mm. etc and and myself and my partner were always like we wanted to use this this name as we evolved our the next business that we mm -hmm. wanted to get involved with, which was this plant-based food business called Okia. Um, so we took the name, registered it, and uh, started to play around with it. In fact, now a lot of people would say OKR, the way we've put it on our original packaging for our, for our milks. But um, yeah, Okia was the was the original name for it. Let's talk about business of it. How hard is it for you to get investments, being a a vegan product. How hard has it been? Is it harder than if we weren't vegan? How, how, how's the process been for investments? I don't think vegan has been an, uh, an issue in terms of finding investors mm -hmm. to, to get behind us as a brand. First and foremost, our brand and our products needed to be delicious and accessible to anybody mm -hmm. not and, and then happen to be vegan. So ah. very importantly, our brand is, is something that's very open to anybody that can that would like to taste our products. Mm -hmm. It's not about um, only four vegans. That's um, smart though, because they're, they're, they're not the biggest market in, in South Africa correct. at the moment. Correct, uh, or the world. Um, and I think the whole vegan, uh, having a vegan stigma to it is, is not I ideal in, my, in our view. It's mm -hmm. about building a food brand that's accessible to to anybody mm. and um, it's and, and that's how we how we really position ourselves and that's how we go about building investment around mm. it about building the brand you know we have cafes in Cape Town that have no vegan uh, name next to it mm. it just happens to be a espresso bar mm. but they both are plant-based. There's nothing mm. there that has any animal products in it. So a lot of people don't even know that. Our customers aren't 99% aren't vegans. They just mm. love our products. So, mm. so when we're looking at investment, it's about people looking to invest in a food brand, mm. um, but also to look at what does the future look like? Mm. You know, is, it, uh, is the future about being sustainable, about being clean label, about being... Um, better for you, all mm. those attributes, and, and our, our food brand lends itself mm. to that. What's the price difference between 200 milliliters of your milk compared to normal milk? Yeah, so there is a price difference. I mean, if you look at, let's, let's rather look at a, a liter. Mm -hmm. So in South Africa, a liter of plant-based milk is around 39, 30, between 35 mm -hmm. and 40 rand. Mm -hmm. And a liter of milk is probably half that price. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there is a barrier to entry mm. in terms of customer being able to afford it. Right now, there's VAT, there's duty, there's VAT on on plant-based milk. There's no VAT on milk. How do you change that? That's about lobbying. I think that's about getting big enough. Um, certainly in Portugal, recently they've just dropped the the VAT on milk, so on mm. plant-based milk. So that's mm. actually starting to happen, um, and um, it's it's about getting big enough that to get the community together to actually lobby that. Mm. The other thing that, that um, puts the price up is the retailers, the markup on a, on a commodity like milk mm. is far less as a staple uh, product than um, a plant-based product, which is a, a niche product currently. 
All right, what's your philosophy of your brand? What is what do you think? Because I think a lot of people now just don't buy something just because it looks good. They're like, there's a philosophy behind it, and it's, I can see the back here. It says, uh, "Plastics suck," which is it's awesome, spelled with S U X. Um, the philosophy of the brand. Um, we just want to be a delicious food brand, um, producing delicious products mm -hmm. that are accessible to anybody and everybody, from the youth right through to older generation. So I'm sure there's a lot of people who are lactose intolerant. This is the, the, the option of their can't drink milk. Exactly. And so how big is that market? So lactose intolerance is actually a very, very big market. Mm -hmm. If you look at um, Africa, I would say percentage-wise, you, you're, you're in the upper 80 or 90% of Africans are actually lactose intolerant. And they so don't even know it. They don't know it. A lot of people are starting to work it out. Mm -hmm. Obviously, everything starts in your gut. And um, there are a lot of people that will come to me and say, you can't believe you've changed my life. I'm now drinking your milk. My skin's got better. My digestive system is better. Mm. I don't feel so bloated anymore. All these things mm. that um, these products um, give you in terms of a health, mm. um, po you know, positive health thing. So, so Asia is pretty much 90%, 95% lactose intolerance. Um, Europe as well. You know, around the world, lactose intolerance mm. is a big thing. They always say, once you stop um, drinking milk from your mom, hence my cap, mm -hmm. then you don't need to drink milk again. Yeah, we're the only animal that drinks milk after, after a certain age Correct. that still drinks the milk of someone else. Yeah, so you don't need milk in your diet. Um, you can get uh, the, the nutrients from other things, but dairy is actually not ideal for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you, what other products do you guys have? Because it looks like you have other products. Yeah. So we we started out with our our oat milk. That was our first product. Mm -hmm. um, then we've done it, um, iterations around that with our chocolate milk, our coffee milk, all with a, with a, the oat milk as the base. Mm -hmm. And then we've added um, cacao to our choco milk, um, freeze dried espresso mm -hmm. to to our um, for our coffee milk. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we're starting to venture into the food space. Our first product is um, our chalk spread. No palm oil in it, no dairy, 18% um, hazelnuts. That's been a very big hit, um, which you can try afterwards. Mm -hmm. We have our coffee beans, which we obviously use in our, our cafes, but we, we now sell that um, uh, retail. It's an organic product, 100% Arabic and coffee bean. Um, and we're just building out the product range now. We've got about five or ten products that are now in development that we want to bring out um, as we find manufacturers for it and, and as we decide when and when's the right time. So you've had really a becoming a food business more than a milk business. You've had a business that's been around for three years and you have all these products out. W what's your secret? Like, you, What is your secret? Because some people will go, stick to one brand, stick to one thing. Uh, instead of diluting your brand, but you guys look like you've, you, you've got many things that are successful. What, what do you guys think is your secret? I think we're actually a bit slow, to be honest. What? Uh, <laughs> I would like to have a couple of more products out. Um, we want to build out the breakfast table, so to speak, mm. in terms of our product range. Um, and the key is, is to try a few things. You're not mm. going to be successful on every single product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but as we find uh, options to to do things and we connect the dots, then we then we really want to bring products live. So, so I don't think there's any special science behind it. It's about putting your head down, mm. and 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 driving as hard as you can to 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 in, in our business um, do a lot of NPD mm. and um, and and bring products live that we feel can can be scalable. And uh, any negative. Uh any, any negative pushback from the normal market? I don't think, I mean, around the world, the dairy market, for example, in terms of um, um, plant-based milks are starting to push back. They're starting mm. to see, oh, hold on, there's things are happening now. now it's, <laughs> it's, it's becoming 10, 15% of the dairy market, mm. plant-based milk, so now it's becoming material. Uh, South Africa's much less, so there's not, you know, dairy is still such mm. a dominant thing. Um, but uh, you see the competitors, you know, if, in terms of our chocolate spread, we, we poke the bear. I can't wait to try the chocolate Every now and again, we're poking the bear. I'm sure you know that bear is, but, uh, and, and the bear <laughs> bites back. So there is, uh, they know, you know, a couple of guys know mm. that we're around. Mm. And, um, you know, it's about us producing products that we think are better for you, mm. better for the environment and, and delicious. So we won't stop in, 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 mm. in iterating and developing new products and some might not even work. So mm. so I, uh, from a personal 
I, I've never checked if I'm lactose intolerant, but if I'm going for a, a, a role that I have to be topless, I go on a diet. And I usually go off milk entirely. And I can feel the difference immediately. And I can just feel it from the texture of my, uh, what's the scientific word for poo? Um, my feces. Uh, immediately I can just see the difference. And I can, I can feel, I feel, uh, I feel lighter. But I've yeah. never called myself lactose intolerant yeah. because, you know, I don't want to sound like I, I can't eat something. You know, if you take a week of eating meat um, and then a week of eating a plant-based mm. diet, you'll feel the opposite, 100% mm. different. Mm. Lighter, cleaner. And it's a real thing because mm. your, your body, um, you know, digests different products differently mm. and uh, you certainly will feel it. There's no doubt about it. So, I mean, you, what you're saying is 100% mm. correct. Okay. So how do you get people to try it? Because I think that's the first step. Like for me, one of the episodes <laughs> I tried a, uh, <clears throat> a, a meatball that was made, lamb that was made in the thingy. Usually I would have gone, ah, sugar, it must be dead. We want to know that it was bleeding. But hmm. I got to try it. How do you change the narrative of people being able just to go pick up the milk and just try it? Because for me, I know I can tell you one thing. For me, I haven't been able to try anything vegan because I'm always there's the perception online about vegans that I'm like ah shut up whatever. How do you start, start changing the perception? Because I had a date with a girl the other day and she actually ordered uh, oat milk, and I was like I wonder what that is. Oh, yeah. Okay, let me try it. You know, because I'm trying to you know finish the deal but uh, but, <laughs> but what, what do you think how can you start changing the narrative because let's be truthfully honest if there's a certain middle class and up if it's an extra 20 rand you, you, you'll buy it if it's an extra 20 or 20 yeah. rand sampling is a big thing mm -hmm. um you know if you don't can't sample you can't get people to try then it's very hard you know we launched in in uh, for our business we launched in covid we couldn't mm -hmm. sample we couldn't get into supermarkets we couldn't do anything so what we did was we went quite heavy on food service in terms mm -hmm. of getting our product, for example, our oat milk into um, cafes mm -hmm. where, you know, people could then order it and try it. We did, you know, a lot of work behind the scenes mm -hmm. in terms of people sending product to, mm -hmm. to consumers, letting them trying it and talk about it mm -hmm. out loud, mm -hmm. social media, obviously, and in various ways. So that is how we kicked off the business. Mm. We've ventured into more sampling, so into mm. stores, into retail, mm. try this, try that. You have to do it. Mm. But the first year of our um, existence, we couldn't do that based on COVID. So we, we had to use other digital mm. channels to get people to try the product and, and, uh, and the food service side, which, which, which worked. I still can't believe you've been around for three years. It, for me, it feels like something that's been around forever. Uh, that's crazy. Uh, for me, what I found when I was gymming is that um, oat milk for me was best for my protein shakes. And that's what I just used to mix with my protein shake. And I always felt, uh, felt better because I couldn't have milk. And then it was like a bit of a treat for me. I couldn't have, because uh, uh, it's better than water. Yeah. Uh, mistakes that you've made as a business. Because I, I think a lot of people speak about the positives. What mistakes? Because it feels like COVID actually worked for you. Or you, were you pivoting and you were just like on your tippy toes? And yeah, um, we, we, we make mistakes all the time. Um, I th you know, COVID worked in our favor in terms of going hard into digital space, mm. hard online, and now online sales for us is a good 20 odd percent mm. of our business, which, mm. which is really great in terms of if, if e-commerce um, naturally is for any products are, let's say three, four, five, six mm. percent, we are on the 20 and, and 22 percent yeah. of, our, of our businesses e-commerce. So that worked for us. What didn't work for us, as an example, in the product, we brought this product out in a liter format, mm. this coffee oat mm. drink, first and foremost, before we launched the 200 mm. mil. And the consumer just couldn't understand a liter of <laughs> coffee oat milk. It was just, yes. you know, around, you know, overseas, I understand mm. it, in America, but South Africans just couldn't, mm. Get the idea of buying a liter of mm. coffee, I put in your fridge, having a glass of iced coffee at home, mm. or heat it up and having a, a instant uh, oat milk coffee. So that uh, really wasn't good for us. Mm. So we we canned that product. We still have it. We, we we've, we've canned it in South Africa mm. and we brought out the 200 mil, which is Smart. easier, ready to drink, mm. um, on the run. So that so was you don't that think was that a comes, big mistake. Sorry, you don't think that comes from a culture for us to have um, these things as a kid? We all come from. Those, juice, those bottled juices that you, you know, uh, we do come from that culture, but then I come to some of my friends' houses and they don't have bottled drink, bottled uh, juice like this at home, but we're used to drinking it out yeah. of a, 
I think there is a culture of that. I mean, maybe because maybe that's why this feels so familiar to me. Um, yeah, it could be. I mean, these are actually more expensive than buying the liter, but the, you know, we thought look value packed. Yes. You know, we're going. We're in COVID now. You know, people want value. Mm. You look at the. You know, in the states. When the UK people buy one and a half or two mm. liter bottles of of yeah, or a chocolate gallon. drink or a yeah. gallon and yeah. it's in the fridge and they yeah. use it and, and it just mm. failed miserably. Mm. So, so that was quite a costly exercise, but we've learned through that. I love as that. long as we you know iterate around it, you're mm. not going to get every hit right. Mm. So, so that's why sometimes we just don't launch a product because mm. we know, hold on, what did we do wrong last mm. time? Let's not do that again. Um, but yeah, that that was quite a big um, uh, was a tough one for us. Uh, Will it get cheaper uh, as time goes on, or is this going to be set price? Um, certainly not in the environment that we are in now. Mm -hmm. You know, we we don't produce we we don't produce these products currently in South mm -hmm. Africa based on we don't have the technology. Oh, wow, we'd have to build a plant, costs a hell of a lot of money. It's all in do dollars and euros. Oh. So for that kind of investment is a is a very difficult one. Mm -hmm. So right now, yeah, I don't think it will get cheaper the way we're going. <laughs> okay. uh, but you never know. Uh, input costs could come down. You know, I think we might have reached the peak of all mm. of this situation, but who knows? I don't know what's around the corner. We, there's a lot of own goals happening. So to, to run a business like this in South Africa isn't, uh, isn't, such a, isn't easy. That's such a polite way to describe South Africa. A lot of own goals. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Okay, I end off by asking. I, I, I can't uh, end an episode without asking this, but... How do you get to the mass market? Because there's, there's, a, there's millions and millions of people there who are lactose intolerant, don't even know it. How do you get, how do you get it to the people, man? Because that's, that's the big market. Yeah, that is, that is the market. Um, so we haven't gone into that market mm -hmm. yet. Um, we would have to adjust ourselves mm -hmm. specifically on where do we produce the product. Mm -hmm. It's all price, price relative. Mm -hmm. um, we would really have to refocus on, on what we do. When we when we kicked this brand off, um, it, essentially it wasn't going to be in South Africa. Mm. We wanted to do something in Europe. Mm. We've always had businesses in South Africa, and we actually wanted to launch us there. COVID hit, and we had a launch here. We couldn't move. Mm. So our actual next step is taking it offshore, mm -hmm. um, and and basically fishing in that mm. pond, versus um, iterating around the product and making it more accessible in South mm. Africa. So it's a choice that you take. Yeah. Our choice is not to do that right now. Mm. We might change, but right now we're looking um, overseas to launch our, our business. Man, it's been a pleasure. I love your authenticity, your calm manner of just calling a spade a spade. Uh, I look forward to trying that haze on that spread because I've been using the other one. You know, the other one that we will not mention. <laughs> uh, but I'm looking forward to this one because this one looks dark like me. Uh, so it's been I, a pleasure. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And thanks for having me. No, man, it's been a pleasure, man. Thanks so much. After that episode, I'm actually pretty hungry. I hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time.